So, folks, what I have for you in this one is the implosion and mockery of the entire Trump family. And we're starting with some news reports about how things are getting really ugly for Donald Trump around that bond deadline. But we're going to close with a clip so brutal that Trump's son, Eric, wants it off the Internet. He wants it gone. And so he's trying to scrub it. So what you need to do is hit that like and subscribe button and share this video far and wide. Make it mega viral before Eric and his team can scrub it because it shows showcases that he is furious that daddy has lost the family inheritance. Maybe he's going to blame other people in public, but he is furious that daddy has blown it and has lost the family inheritance in just a short number of years. So listen to this. It's some reports in the media and the Trumpers, they watch this. The Trump family watches this. So you're going to watch a couple clips that Eric saw before he went on the news today. And then you're going to see a Trump Trump's son ball his eyes out in front of the world and it is deliciously hilarious how daddy ruined his life uh complaining about the department of justice saying um, there's been absolute you know silence to its request for documents in the case while you know trump uh makes a request and all of a sudden all these documents appear let's listen to uh michael cohen uh on the documents those documents belong to the people, and they should have been released under FOIA, because I'll tell you what those documents are going to show. It's going to show that Donald Trump, through a willing and complicit bloviated attorney general, went ahead, weaponized the United States Department of Justice, and unconstitutionally remanded a United States citizen. <laughs> Does he have a point? There is a point. There is a point is that Donald Trump has gotten treated differently by the law than than average citizens like Michael Cohn, that Donald Trump was in a position to use his own attorney general, possibly to intimidate or silent silence a potential witness. Um, those are real things. That's been one of the problems with uh, Trump as as uh, the nation's chief law enforcement official and Donald Trump as as president. Um, Michael Cohn, you know, Michael Cohn, I think, has to be taken with a grain of salt when he's when he's talking about what documents are out there and how incriminating they might be. Um, but of course, he has a point. And, and I think some of this is going to come home to roost in the DA's prosecution. You mentioned at the top of the show about Trump that he broke. He's also he dumb, you know, and what we found <laughs> out over the last week particularly this, this cash situation, right? Under oath a year ago, he says, I have $400 million and I'm adding to it monthly. And then suddenly you come up to this judgment and he said, actually, I don't have it. And then as Andrew has repeatedly pointed out, I've noted, he then takes to social media and said, actually, I have $500 million. That had to make his attorneys pull their hair out. And it's because he is ignorant and unsophisticated and he is not a good person to now have in a, in a courtroom where he's going to be put on the stand and held accountable for a fact pattern. In this particular case, there's a tape recording of, of him directing uh, Michael Cohn to get the money from his CFO so they could pay hush money. Uh, when he's on the stand, he doesn't stick to the script. He, uh, he tends to brag and bloviate. And that's going to hound them during this court proceeding. They have to be worried about that. I just want to come back to the point that you made at the top, Andrew, which is... <clears throat> None of this is normal, right? So as if it were not normal that you have a former president who has a multi-million dollar judgment that he's got to come up with and he's out there saying, I got the money, and he has lawyers saying, no, he doesn't. You then layer onto it the Bragg case, which is, yes, we often talk about it as the hush money case so as to differentiate it from the other election interference cases, but it's fundamentally an election interference case. We talk about the schedules colliding we are watching tomorrow in real time the way that all of this is is coming into focus at the same time. So just remember, the judgment is as a result of fraud that's been found by the judge. Um, the criminal case that we're talking about the schedule of is um, is also about false business records. And just remember, and about a plan that was a catch and kill with a media outfit that was being partisan and was helping one political candidate. And that was all part of the scheme that's alleged there. So it's like it's more fraud, but with a media outfit trying to help him win the election. 
And we have somebody who has also paid $95 million in, in a bond for sexual assault and repeated defamation. Um, as Nancy Pelosi says, this is somebody you wouldn't allow in your house and is the leading candidate for the presidency, which is a real sign of where we are as a country. Andrew and Tim. Donald Trump has until Monday to pay his bond. He owes nearly half a billion dollars in penalties in the New York fraud case. And if he doesn't pay up, the state of New York could seize some of his most prized assets. And while Trump may soon get $3 billion in a merger deal involving his Truth Social platform, the money won't come in time to solve his current cash crunch. Where's the lobby? Down the hall and to the left. Trump built his name and his persona in big gold letters all over some of the Big Apple's most high-priced addresses. Trump Tower would be the thing I'm really married to in terms of real estate. Now, he's at risk of having some of them taken away. I built a net worth of way over $10 billion. Mr. President! Despite those claims, a New York court ruled last month Trump lied for years about his wealth. And it's ordered him to pay $454 million in penalties. We have a lot of cash and we have a great company, but they want to take it away. So far, Trump hasn't been able to pony up the money or find lenders willing to underwrite the fine. And while he hopes the state appeals court will give him more time, the attorney general is ready to start collecting with her eyes set on a particular Trump asset. Yes, I look at 40 Wall Street each and every day. Meanwhile, Trump's friends are passing the hat for the former president, with no takers so far. Court. Will you loan him the $460 million? <laughs> None of his billionaire friends are ponying up money, from what I understand. I've been asking them. Here with me today, New York Times contributing writer Jane Koston, Ryan Salam, president of the Manhattan Institute and contributing writer at the National Review. Catherine Rampell, a Washington Post opinion columnist and special correspondent at PBS NewsHour. And Jonah Goldberg, editor-in-chief of The Dispatch. He's also a columnist at the LA Times. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, so Catherine, you saw the, the hat passing, the kind of shaking of the, of the jar. The telethon. Exactly. <laughs> Why won't anyone? bail him out. We heard, you know, 30 bond companies saying no. I think the better question is why would anyone bail him out? I mean, how much money do you want to light on fire, basically, for this guy? It turns out that if you get in trouble for fraudulently inflating the value of your assets, then nobody wants to accept those assets as collateral for effectively a loan to you. Right. Um, and beyond that, beyond the fact that his property, you know, is questionably valued. We don't know how indebted he is. We don't know how much equity he has in these things. Um, if he becomes president again, presumably it would become very difficult to collect. He's also a guy who's known for not paying his bills. If you try, he brags about not paying his bills. If you tried to collect once he's in office, who's to say he won't sick the DOJ or Treasury on you? I just think that there's no upside yeah. to stepping up here. Ryan, you're wearing a very nice suit. Let's pretend you are an insurer or a multi-billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Would you want to give Trump the money? Well, if in, someone who believes that Donald Trump realistically can win the presidency, uh, I would argue that actually the attorney general of New York trying to seize his landmark properties uh, would actually be something that will help him rather than hurt him is in, a, in his effort to win the presidency. The persecution exactly, argument. exactly. And also, look, another thing is that if I were someone who was going to make a, you know, $500 million in-kind campaign contribution to a very controversial presidential candidate, I might think that the spotlight gets turned on me in terms of whether or not prosecutors in New York City, New York State, other blue jurisdictions might tart look at my finances and otherwise uh, putting me under the microscope in a way that I might find uncomfortable. Okay, so it's not obvious to me that it would make sense. It's interesting. You're bolstering an argument from the Wall Street Journal because the editorial board calls the bond uh, inflated. They say it denies him due process. Uh, so, Jane, from your... I, I, it's I'm insane. I'm trying to understand how this number came about, $454 million or $464 million, and what the real number is. How did they come up with this number? You know what? It, it was it was a crooked number. They, there, there are no victims. There, there is no number. Right. The number should be zero. My, my father's run a a great company. I run a great company. We've never had a default. We've never missed a payment. We've never been in a breach of covenant. Every single one of our lenders came out and he goes out and the judge comes out and says, you know, I want to take the scourgement. I want to go back and I want to take interest rates that you paid on mortgages and put it up to 10, 11, 12 percent and go back 
20 years, and we already won this in the appellate court. The appellate court already said that there's a statute of limitation, that 99% of what he put in there is thrown out. But Maria, th this isn't about this. This is a lawfare. They want to hurt my father, who is winning the presidential race right now. He's beating Biden in every single poll, in every single swing state. He came out and said he wants to put hundreds of millions of dollars of his own money into his campaign. Right. And how do they deprive him of that? They have that judge that you have on the screen right there come up with an astronomical number, give you zero time to post a bond, a bond that's not even commercially available in the United States. It's this, not. This it, it, no one's ever seen a bond th this size. Every single person, when I came to them saying, hey, can I get a half billion dollar bond? Maria, they were laughing. They were laughing. Yeah. Top executives of the largest surety companies had never seen anything of this size. And what, they're gonna start seizing assets if he can't put up something that's not available so, in the United I mean, States? You said there were no victims. And you have an attorney general who ran on the notion of getting mm -hmm. my father. I'm going to go into the attorney general's office every single day, sue Donald Trump, and go home. I'm gonna take him down. You watch, I'm going to sue the blank out of him. That was her political platform. She campaigned on that, she fundraised on that, we didn't have a chance, Janine. We just didn't have a chance in New York because it's a rigged system. And you you could not have a better real estate company than, than ours. You could not have a more professional real estate company than ours. When COVID hit and they shut down every single hospitality company in the country, guess who never missed a loan payment? Guess who paid all of their employees? Who Guess who always did the right thing? Guess who employs thousands of New Yorkers every single day puts food on the table for their families, educates their, their children. You know, I, I mean, you have a lost state right now where you have businesses fleeing, 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 and you have a company like ours that have paid over $300 million in taxes to a city. My father built the skyline of New York City, and this is the thanks he gets for doing absolutely nothing wrong, not a dollar financial loss, the exact opposite hundreds of millions of dollars in financial gain. And as to Don and I, we every single witness testified, we have nothing to do with this. They went in witness after witness. This is not what they did in the company. It didn't matter to this guy. You know, we were trophies on a wall for this guy. You know, this is the state of New York. I caution anybody. I caution anybody even thinking about moving to New York to just be careful. This is not the state that my father grew up in. This is not the state that we grew up in. It, it, this is the demise of a politically weaponized system. And it's it's horribly sad, Janine. And, and I promise you, we're going to fight this and we're going to win at the appellate division because honestly, it's so egregious. It's so egregious. I promise you we're going to get it overturned. But the one thing I'll tell you, it's caused the greatest fundraising. My po father's poll numbers have absolutely gone through the roof. They're not even talking about any other Republican candidates because they've all kind of you know, disappeared. They're not even in the equation. I mean, last night I had an argument between two people in a restaurant who are trying to buy Laura and I dinner to apologize to what the, you know, for what the United States government has done to our family, Sean. I mean, you wouldn't believe the energy out there. I've been through all of these firestorms over the year. I've never seen America more mad than it is right now. There's only so many times you can cry wolf. People are not buying this sham in the country. They see the weaponization of the FBI. They're calling it the police state in this country. Um, people get this for what it is, Sean. The, you know, they've uh, removed the wool from people's eyes and people know exactly what's going on. They're targeting Donald Trump. They're targeting his family. They're targeting everybody around him. They're targeting his lawyers. Uh, anybody that's close to Donald Trump, anybody who's effective, they're targeting right now. And people understand this for exactly what is $1,000 payment. It doesn't make any sense when people are getting murdered in the street, when people are getting shot on Fifth Avenue. It makes no sense at all. Alvin Bragg should be ashamed of himself. Letitia James should be ashamed of himself and all of these people. We have to stop the games. We have to stop the nonsense. We have to let the democratic process prevail. But unfortunately, the Democrats don't care. They will lie, cheat, and steal to win. We saw it in 2020. We're seeing it right now. They will do anything that they can to take out a political rival of theirs. And um, we're going to fight it. And as we always do, Eric, we're, we're going to win. We won Russia. We won the impeachments. We won the Ukraine hoax. We won, you know, the Kavanaugh battle. We, we've won so many freaking battles at this point, And we're going to win this one. You better believe it.